we were in a point where we got to see that, yeah, we are mildly involved with Vietnam, but we are far from being full-scale involved. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, we did get to this point where we split and we have two leaders, correct? We did get to this point last time? Okay. Now, before we go forward, I want to point out a couple things here. First, what we see happening in Vietnam is similar to what happened in Korea. It's split. The North is communist. The South is democratic. But we're also going to have a scenario where we now have a new ally that's on the front of the Cold War battle lines. If you kind of take a look at it in terms of territory held, well now here's the front line. Now I say that because we did the same thing in Korea. If there's an invasion, we need to help our ally. But this is where things are going to get very complicated. The power structure in Vietnam is one and such that there have been one power vacuum after another. We were talking last time about how the French used to have Vietnam as a colony. During World War II, they're pushed out, and the Japanese come in. They fill the power vacuum. Then when World War II is over, the Japanese are pushed out, and the French fill the power vacuum. The French are going to hold Vietnam as their colony for another nine years, roughly, until they're just massacred at Dien Bien Phu, leave it to the French. Now when they leave, there's a new power vacuum that we have to fill. We are going to stand by South Vietnam and say, you are our ally. We will protect you because we have to. By 1954, when it's time for us to fill the power vacuum, we have a sitting president that you heard of before. President Eisenhower is now in charge. Now, where have we heard Eisenhower before? He was the supreme allied commander. He's the one who is going to create the D-Day invasion. When Eisenhower is elected president, we see that the communists are on the march. And what some of his advisors said is, it's okay. You can lose South Vietnam. It's not geostrategically important enough. So just let it fall. It'll be okay. Eisenhower kind of looks at some of these advisors and he says, you guys are crazy. If we're going to contain communism, we got to contain it everywhere. We have to stop the spread. And some of his advisors said, yeah, but not Vietnam. You can let that one slide. What Eisenhower comes up with is he says, don't you see, it's all dominoes. If one country falls to communism, its neighbors will fall as well. Now, even some of his advisors are saying, no, that's probably not true. Look at the map. This is where Eisenhower kind of makes a very easy case. So I'll go ahead and explain to you guys, basically the same way he did. What was the first nation to fall to communism? Russia. Russia. Russia shares a border with China. What happens to China? Communism. Falls to communism. China has borders. What's another country that borders China that falls to communism? North Korea. North Korea. The North Koreans tried to take South Korea. We stopped them. Now it's spread to North Vietnam. So who's next on the menu? South Vietnam. South Vietnam. What Eisenhower says is simply, we have to stop it. We have to stand up to them. But I'm not sending troops to Vietnam. What Eisenhower says is, we will support our ally. We will give them assistance. But I'm not about to put American boots in Vietnam. We'll support them in different ways. What Eisenhower says is, we're going to go ahead and we'll give them money, we'll give them supplies, we're even going to give them military advisors. Some of the most high-ranking American generals go to Vietnam as advisors to instruct them and give them advice on how to maybe stop communist expansion. Now I'll go ahead and ask you, is this too soft? Yes. No. No. Yes. Okay. Well, let's go to the other side of the spectrum then. 
Let's launch a nuclear attack on North Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. it'll stop. How so, Sam? North Vietnam. Does it, no one North Vietnam. Just wipe them off the map. That would solve the problem, wouldn't it? Does it create other problems? Maybe. Sure. Probably have issues with China then. You'd have issues with the Soviet Union. So maybe we take that off the table. But should we do more than just sending money, supplies, and advisors? Oh. Oh. Why not, Lux? That's a military thing to do yourself, I feel. Okay. I mean, what else could you possibly ask for besides troops? Nuclear strike. Well, I mean, no. <laughs> this is as far as you want to go without sending troops. Lux, I think you make a very fair argument. You say, we're giving them resources. You guys go fight the communists. Eisenhower is going to take a lot of heat for this. There are plenty of people that say, you're not being tough enough. You got to escalate. Then we're going to have a new president come to power. President Kennedy says, I think this will work, but he's kind of wavering. He might have sent troops into Vietnam on a large scale had he not been assassinated. We'll never know. What we do know is what his replacement does. Kennedy's replacement is President Lyndon Johnson. Now again, Johnson, just like Kennedy, is a Democrat. He wants to be certain that now that he is in power, that he establishes himself as being tough on communism. So he inherits this Vietnam problem. And people start asking him, Mr. President, what do you want to do to combat the spread of communism? How do you want to deal with South Vietnam? And what Johnson says is, is pretty straightforward. He says, I'm going to continue sending money and supplies and advisors, but I think eventually we're going to need boots on the ground. We're going to need American troops in Vietnam to stop the spread. Now, Lux, you disagree with that, correct? Yeah. What Johnson kind of finds himself in is this weird little constitutional problem. Sending troops is an act of war. But in our system, there's only one group of people that can declare war. Who is it? Congress, Congress can declare war. The president cannot. So sending troops into Vietnam would be a very strange constitutional issue. Well, we are in times where we have changed this. Now, of course, it's not formally, it's informally. We allow presidents to kind of just make their own wars. We just allow them to act very independently. What Johnson's going to do is he's going to send combat troops by 1964. He starts sending troops and he sends 20,000. Is that enough? <laughs> Lux, you were saying it shouldn't be any. So he sends 20,000. Now, Sam, I believe it was you that was saying you got to send troops, right? 20,000 enough? How many do you think you need? How many horses do you not have? I think that's a good question. We don't know. But, Sam, I think you asked a good question. Would you say, like, equal to what North Vietnam has? More. More? 100,000? They can't. They want to totally contain communism. They can't get any chance to kill. So why not a million? That's we don't, we don't, I don't know if we don't have the resources. So, but you said anything to stop the spread of communism? Yeah. But no nuclear strike? Uh, not if it hurts us. Sounds like we're walking a fine line here. And Sam, I absolutely hear you. Now we're going to have an incident that's going to make this very much official. What's going to take place is what's called the Gulf of Tonkin incident. Now, this is going to be something that a lot of people dispute, and there has to be kind of sides played here. Now, first, I need to point out, the Gulf of Tonkin is the body of water that's just off the coast of North Vietnam. In the Gulf of Tonkin, as we're starting to escalate our presence, the U.S. military said, we have a bit of a problem. We're not exactly sure what North Vietnam is capable of. We're not sure whether they're strong or they're weak. So we need some intelligence. They're going to send a very small and very limited 
American warship presence into the Gulf of Tonkin. And these very small, very limited um, uh, gunboats are told, do not engage the enemy. Don't do it. In fact, very strictly, you do not engage the North Vietnamese should you run across them. We're not sure exactly what happened. But we do know that the American gunships are going to run into a North Vietnamese patrol boat. This is where the story gets very hazy. The SS Maddox said, we were fired upon first. So we simply returned fire. Now, these are very small, very limited gunboats. But they do cause some damage. Now we got to kind of think about what this means big picture. If the SS Maddox was fired upon first, is that an act of war? We return fire. Is that self-defense? Yes. yes. Now let's flip it. What if the SS Maddox fired upon this North Vietnamese gunship first? Act of war? Yeah. Vietnamese defending themselves? Yeah. We really don't know who fired first. But I will go ahead and tell you. Do you want to believe the communists? No. <laughs> the biggest mistake that everyone has is trusting the communists. So what happened? We don't know. What we do know is we have an act of war. President Johnson's going to take this and he says, I need to go to Congress. Congress needs to declare war. Make me the commander in chief. When they do that, I now have the power of the, of the U.S. military. I can now send in more troops. Now, again, we got to play the political game here. If Congress declares war, do they look tough on communism? Yes. If they don't, do they look soft on communism? No. Yes. Okay. Now, is it worth going to war over tiny South Vietnam? No. No. Congress takes this resolution, and they punt. They want a third option. What Congress will do is not declare war, but not stop the president. They're going to pass what they call the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, where they say to President Johnson, we're not declaring war, but you can, quote, take all necessary measures to stop the spread of communism. Whatever you want to do is fine by us. They have basically just taken their only war-making power and handed it off to the president and said, we don't want to be the ones to make this decision. You do it. Do they look tough on communism? Do they look soft on communism? They've made some choices where they simply say, President Johnson, you do what you want. So does that mean sending troops is an option? Okay. Nuclear strike, is that an option? Yeah. We just let the president do that. Now, what do I need you to do? Hack everything up. Everything, everything. 